Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. In this episode, we'll see how to train an artificial neural network using the Keras API integrated with TensorFlow. In previous episodes, we went through steps to generate data and also build an artificial neural network. So now we'll bring these two together to actually train the network on the data that we created and processed. All right, so picking up where we were last time in our Jupyter Notebook, uh, make sure that you still have all of your imports included and already ran so that we can continue where we were before. So first we have, after building our model, we are going to call this model.compile function. And this just prepares the model for training. So it gets everything in order that's needed before we can actually train the model. So first we are specifying to the compile function what optimizer that we want to use, and we are choosing to use the very common optimizer, Atom, with a learning rate of 0.0001. And next we specify the type of loss that we need to use, which is in our case, we're going to use sparse categorical cross <laughs> we're going to use sparse categorical cross entropy. And then lastly, we specify what metrics we want to see. So this is just for uh, the model performance, what we want to be able to judge our model by. And we are specifying this list, which just includes accuracy, which is a very common way to be able to evaluate model performance. So if we run this cell, all right, so the model has been compiled and is ready for training. And training occurs whenever we call this fit function. Now recall earlier in the course, we actually looked at the documentation for this fit function so that we knew how to process our input data. So to fit, the first parameter that we're specifying is X here, which is our input data, which is currently stored in this scaled trained samples variable. Then Y, which is our target data or our labels, our labels are currently stored in the train labels variable, so we are specifying that here. Next, we specify our batch size that we want to use for training. So this is how many samples are included in one batch to be passed and processed by the network at one time. So we're setting this to 10. And the number of epochs that we want to run, we're setting this to 30. So that means that the model is going to process or train on all of the data in the data set 30 times before completing the total training process. Next, we're specifying this shuffle, or shuffle parameter, which we are setting to true. Now, by default, this is already set to true, but I was just bringing it to your attention to show uh, or to make you aware of the fact that the data is being shuffled by default when we pass it to the network, which is a good thing because we want any uh, order that is inside of the data set to be kind of erased before we pass the data to the model so that the model is not necessarily learning anything about the order of the data set. So this is true by default, so we don't necessarily have to specify that. I was just letting you know, and actually uh, we'll see something about that in the next episode about why this is important uh, regarding validation data, but we'll see that coming up. The last parameter that we specify here is verbose, which is just an option to allow us to see output from whenever we run this fit function. So we can either set it to zero, one, or two. Two is the most verbose level in terms of output messages. So we are setting that here so that we can get the highest level of output. So now let's run this cell so that training can begin. All right, so training has just stopped and we have run for 30 epochs. And if we look at the progress of the model, so we're starting out on our first epoch, our loss value is currently 0.68 and our accuracy is 50%, so no better than chance. But pretty quickly, looking at the accuracy, we can tell that it is steadily increasing all the way until we get to our last epoch, which we are yielding 94% accuracy and our loss has also steadily decreased from the 0.65 range to now being at 0.27. So uh, as you can see, th this model trained very quickly with each epoch taking only under one second to run. And within 30 epochs, we are already at a 94% accuracy rate. Now, although this is a very simple model and we were training it on very simple data, we can see that without much effort at all, we were able to yield pretty great results in a relatively quick manner of time as well. 
In subsequent episodes, we'll demonstrate how to work with more complex models as well as more complex data. But for now, hopefully this example served the purpose of encouraging you on how easy it is to get started with Keras. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at the Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deeplizzard.com. And check out the Deep Blizzard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.